What's up guys, I'm Grandmaster Shimon and welcome back to Flower Paradise and today we have episode 2 of Sakura Night 3 and if you guys did miss the previous episode I'd highly recommend going back and checking that out. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to play through the remainder of the Sakura games on this channel. I can get through them all if you guys want to with the R18 patches. Obviously I'll have to censor them out um, but let me know in the comment section down below who your favorite character is because I'm still kind of stuck between Rune and Felicia. Uh, Tart's definitely last place for me, uh, unfortunately. Um, I will say, though, the main character reminds me a little bit of myself. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Just the, the way that she constantly uh, talks about how she's really normal and that she doesn't deserve all of this and that she's, you know... I, I tend to have self-confidence issues myself and whatnot. And I, 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 she's a character that I can put myself into really easily, except obviously she's hot and I'm not. But that's just that's just how it goes. Uh, but if I had to, I, I, I still think Felicia's probably my number one with Rune at a very, very, very close second. But that could definitely change as I continue to play through this game. But make sure you guys have hit the like button and we're just going to jump right into it. <clears throat> I found myself drawn into a loving embrace. Felicia gently caresses my cheek while Tart throws her arms around my waist. I feel the warmth of Tart's skin through the fabric of my clothes. Her soft lavender hair tickles my shoulders. My friends are all soft and sweet like marshmallows. And when I'm with them, I almost find myself believing the kind things that they say. They make me think that I really can become a proper knight. I'm still lacking in many areas, but they continue to support me despite my shortcomings. They love me, and I love them in return. You guys are so nice to me. I don't know if I really deserve it, but... I glance between them, my face flushed with a profound happiness, the likes of which I've never felt before. I love you too. I love you more than anything. At the start of my journey, when everything went wrong, I was horribly homesick. I thought of giving up. I long to return home. I've, I'd found so stifling and embraced my mother and father again, but I'm glad I kept going. If I hadn't, I never would have met Felicia, Rune, or Tart. I wouldn't have been able to share tender moments like this with my friends. At this moment, I don't care which, what trials or tribulations await me. I'll face them all without flinching. I'm sure I can do anything, so long as I have these three girls with me. We can do anything. I'm sure of it. And the marketplace. The rest of the day passed in a fun, uh, relaxing way with my party members. We wandered the streets of Grimoire at our leisure, examining the shops and sampling delicious treats. Rune is particularly fond of the chocolate and banana crepes that you can buy at vendors. She eats her crepe happily, getting a few globs of melted chocolate on her nose. She looks so cute like this, I can't help but laugh at her. Tart laughs too, and then she reaches to lick the chocolate off of Rune's button nose. Huh? Rune blinks at Tart, unplussed. Why, you lick? You had a bit of chocolate on your face. I was just cleaning you up. Really? Rune's brow, brow furrows. You could, could have told me. Don't need to lick. You cat girl, not a puppy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The chocolate was so enticing I couldn't help myself. It'd be a shame to waste it, wouldn't it? I guess? Rune relents. She doesn't sound all that certain. Her face is flushed. But to my relief, she doesn't get angry. If Tart had pulled that little stunt in the past, I'm sure Rune would have scratched her or tackled her. Rune's done worse before. Rune and Tart used to bicker all the time about the smallest things, but their relationship improved a good deal. I couldn't help but smile when I watched them. Rune sees me smiling and she frowns. What's so funny, Etsy? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just thinking it's nice that you get along so well. Mm, but of course, said Tart throws one arm around Rune's shoulder, pulling her against her chest. We're the best of friends, aren't we, Rune? Why, you're so adorable, I could eat you up. <laughs> she has. <clears throat> Tart begins to ruffle the top of Rune's head. Rune pouts and tries to throw her off, but also all while struggling to, to hold on to her half-eaten crepe. Tart, no pat. You stop right now. I won't stop. You can't make me. Your hair is so smooth and silky. I just want to muss it all up. Uh, oh. Tart 
Tart and Rune watch, wide-eyed, as Rune's grip on her crepe falters. Crepe falters. The sweet tart falls from her grasp and hits the cobblestone ground with an un inaudible thud. The melted gooey chocolate trickles all over the cobblestones. Bits of banana scatter through the fallen leaves. Rune stares at the crepe, and so does Tart. My, my. Felicia smiles, one hand on her chin. This is quite the fine mess, isn't it? You girls should learn to stop playing with your food. It, it wasn't my fault. Rune suddenly snaps, her eyes full of fury. Tart's fault. She knocked me, kept messing around. She bumped my arm, dropped my crepe. I thought she okay. I was wrong. She evil, wicked. Hey now, it was a mistake, you know. Tart takes a step back, holding her hands in front of it, uh, of in self-defense. Wait. Holding her hands in front of in self-defense. Whoopsies. Hold on. Hold on. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, shit. That not good enough. Don't want another crepe. Want that one. I, I know, but that crepe's all dirty now. You can't pick it up off the ground. You'll get germs. And whose fault that? Rune rounds Tart, her lips pulled back in a snarl. She reaches out and grabs Tart's shoulders tightly between her paws. Stupid Tart! Stupid, stupid! Okay, hold on. Real quick. Just a, a, a minor, like, the artwork's amazing. Don't get me wrong. But I do believe that they reused this from one of the previous games, or both of the previous games. If Tart is grabbing... Or if, is Tart grabbing Rune's shoulders? Yeah, Rune is grabbing Tart's shoulders. So Rune is the one attacking, meaning that she should be the one on top in this situation, right? Unless Tart gets the advantage later on, but theoretically. So they're fighting again. So if you guys haven't seen the second one, they totally fuck. So I'm surprised that they, 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 that was just that quickly bickering, you know. They, they, I mean, they, they went to town in the last game, so. Tart winces. You're hurting me. You deserve it. You ruined everything. A everything? Isn't, isn't that a bit harsh? It, it, true. It was only a crepe. And it my favorite. All girls love sweets. Sweets are made of dreams and love and hope. And you destroyed it. You not a real girl, you demon, monster, it, I never forgive you. <laughs> oh, Rune. <laughs> ah, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? I did try and apologize, but there's nothing I can do about getting all bent out of shape like that. You're acting like an immature child. And you wicked, loveless beast. I I'm not a beast, I'm a cute, elegant cat witch. You're the real brute here. Brute, I not, you take it back. I won't, then I make you. I'd like to see you try. Err. Nyah. <laughs> and they're fighting again. If I don't try and intervene, they might end up ripping each other's hair out. Um. I shift from foot to foot anxiously. This is bad. I thought we were all friends now, but maybe not. Can our bronze be broken over something as tripled as a trampled crepe? Friendship is, more, is much more fickle than I thought. Felicia! What should we do? Do you? Felicia presses her finger against her lower lip and she smiles. I I do not think there's anything we could do given the situation. But if we don't try and stop them, they'll tear each other's throats out. Oh, I doubt it will come to that. They might bicker from time to time, but I'm sure they'll hash things out soon enough. We just need to be patient. Uh, I, I hope you're right. Quite the crowd has begun to form around Rune and Tart. Some people are egging them on, while others are taking bets on who they think will win. People are so shameless. I can't believe this is happening because of one single crepe. Please, come to your senses soon, I pray quietly. I don't want to witness a bloodbath. While it's true that, they, that it might be good for the skin, blood's incredibly, incredibly hard to wash off clothes. Blood is good for the skin? All right, Elizabeth, chill out for a second. This is shaping up to be a disaster. 
Fortunately, fortunately, the Great Creep Disaster, or Creep Gate, as I prefer to call it, resolves itself without fur more, fur, furor, bleh, much more furor. Rune and Tart fight for a little while, but they soon exhaust their anger. Tart apologizes once more for her clumsiness, and, ab and abashed Rune, breathing heavily from all that exhaustion, relents. Tart buys Rune a brand new crepe, and things return to normal. It's a relief nothing too terrible happened. I'm a pessimist by nature, and I always expect the worst. See, another thing that we have in common. I am an absolute pessimist. Like, hardcore pessimist. Always think the worst result's gonna happen. I'm all for that. <clears throat> but maybe I should have had a little bit more faith in Rune and Tart. Our bonds are too strong to be severed over a crepe, and even a really, really yummy, um, yummy one. Once that's all been taken care of, the four of us go for a relaxing dip in a nearby hot springs. We soak for a couple of hours until the weariness has been uh, exercised from our bones. Oh, here we go. While we relax in the warm water, the sun dips below the horizon and the stars come out to play. It's a clear night and the stars are plainly visible above my head. They look very distant and far away, but they're no less pretty for it. Our bath concluded, we towel ourselves dry and return to the inn for a bit of shut-eye. We strip off my undergarments, as does Rune, and we climb into our respective beds. Oh, they all sleep naked? Okay. Okay, they have clothes on in this scene, but I don't know if I have to censor it, so I might. I, I'll, I'll make that decision. Do you have to censor underwear? I don't know. Because, like, you don't have to, you shouldn't have to censor, like, bathing suits, right? And that's, like, it's just pure black. Probably have to censor it. Gosh dang it. I've been lying beneath the covers ever since, trying to get to sleep, but my best attempts are all in vain. I'm f I feel physically, uh, I feel tired physically, but my mind refuses to shut down. What a nice day, Creepgate notwithstanding. But, for some reason, the atmosphere in my room feels awfully heavy. I have no idea why. I feel as though something bad is going to happen. Am I being paranoid? I don't know. There's a chance that this could be my anxiety playing up, but... Etsy, you still awake? A soft voice re uh, ruses me. I sit up in my bed, the covers pooling around me, and I look at my companion. Rune is standing by the side of my bed, her ears folded against her skull, and her tail is swishing back and forth. She looks agitated. Is she anxious too? I'm still awake. Why? Are you having trouble sleeping? Hmm. I trying, but sleep no come. I too worried. About what? Rune doesn't reply at once. Instead, she frowns, her eyes oddly dark in the shifting shadows. Etsy, can I sleep in your bed? I no like being alone. Not tonight. Want to be with you. Oh. <clears throat> That's fine. There isn't much space, but if you don't mind... I no mind. Like being with you. Want hug. Aw. <laughs> See, th th it's times like this where I'm like, Rude is just so precious. Is she not just so precious? Aw. I feel like we're gonna have a scene here, though, to be fair. I I, I played the, the, the series enough times to kind of figure out that, nah, there's a pretty decent chance. <clears throat> That's awfully forward of you, but I guess I won't mind a hug either. I I might keep calm. I, it might help calm my nerves. I shuffle back in my narrow bed, which wasn't really built for two people, then peel back the covers. Here you go. There should be enough space. Thank you, Etsy. Rune smiles at me gratefully. Then she ch uh, clambers into the bed beside me. See, this is, this is the artwork, man. This is what I'm talking about. The artwork is just so good. Like, look at how, I mean, I wish my skin was that smooth. My skin is not smooth at all. I, I, I don't know if I want it to glow like that. I feel like glowing like that is a little bit unhealthy unless they're covered in, like, body oil. But, you know. And, I mean, Rude is just so cute. Is she not? This is why it's really hard for me to choose, because Felicia's also really cute, and I like how forward she is when she talks. So it's just so difficult, because I think I feel like Etsy, I, I, I or sorry, Etsy's the main character. I, Rune, I feel like I like her appearance more than Felicia, even though they're both extremely attractive. But I feel like Felicia's personality kind of pushes the edge in her favor. 
Uh, will we get a scene here, though? If the proprietor of this inn knew we were sharing a bed, I doubt they'd be pleased. Is that is that how that works? It, can you imagine, like, going into a hotel and the, the, the owner of the hotel's there and he's like, Hmm. Two, two people sharing a bed? How dare they? That is awful. I will never forgive them for this. <laughs> Dude, who cares? I don't think the proprietor of the inn is going to be like, well, you two slept together. Guess I got to kick you out. But they're not here, so it shouldn't matter. Well, it would be really weird if they were here. Does the owner of the inn just, like, come into rooms? Like, yo, what's up, guys? Oh, my God, you guys are half naked on the bed. All right, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> or, or I guess it, he'd be mad, right? He said that uh, they said he'd be mad, so just, like, Come in. How dare you sleep together? Just like randomly barge into their room. Is that how is that how medieval inns work? Besides, it's not like we're doing anything inappropriate. We're just cuddling for now. I can feel the warmth of Rune expose skin against my own. Her, she feels hotter than a normal human. Perhaps it's because of the wolf's blood that runs through her. Ah, uh, see if she's hotter than a normal human. I actually kind of don't. I don't want that though, because like. I, I love cuddling and hugs as much as anybody, uh, but I'd prefer them to be cold. But I, I personally would rather it be cold than hot, like, any time. But, I mean, there's there's definitely benefits to the warmth as well. It's just... <clears throat> anyway. I'm not sure of the exact reason, but she's comfortable nonetheless. Uh, Etsy. Rune peers into my face. I... Sorry about earlier. Sorry? What for? I argued with Tart again. You want us to get along. We meant to be friends, but I lost my temper. Are you mad? I was worried at the time, it's true, but I wasn't angry with you. You promise? I promise. I already made it up with Tart, so there shouldn't be any problems. Just try not to argue with her again. It makes me worry about you. Okay, I know what to make Etsy worry, so I try. I no hate Tart like I did. I can be your friend. It no bother me, but... Room pouts. She's still annoying. That's fair. Alright, we got another decision here. We could say, I don't think she's that annoying, or she's pretty annoying, yeah. So... Ugh. So, in the harem ending, I feel like I should say that I don't think she's that annoying, but she is. <laughs> Tar Tart's- one of Tart's worst qualities, I feel like, is that she is annoying. I, I- frankly, she just kinda is. I mean, she's attractive, sure, but all the character they make all the characters have, like, the, the perfect physical features, you know? In real life, they would all be supermodels, we all know that. That's just how anime works. Everyone gets all of the all of the thighs and the and the the hips, you know, and boobs and beautiful faces. Like, I I, I do like her paws though. I like how her uh, uh, um, Rune's paws are like just like gloves. I have my own gloves. Oh, they're over there. Um. I kind of want to say she's pretty annoying, but I think I think we're going to try for the harem ending first to get the harem ending done, so I think we'll say that she's not that annoying. <clears throat> I don't think Tart's that annoying. She was just trying to make amends, and I'm sure she didn't mean to bump into you at the market. I think it was an accident. Hmm? Rune pouts. You probably right. I don't think she mean, but still annoying. She should be more careful. Well, I think that's something we can both agree on. You agree? Rune peers into my face, her blue eyes very round in the dark. Thank Etsy. Knew I could rely on you. You nice, but... That not all I wanted to say. Something bothering me. Something serious. More serious than your argument with Tart? Much more serious. Maybe it my imagination, but I can sense something. Something? What sort of something? I no no. It vague, hard to say, but feels like something bad will happen. The air is rotten. I can smell it. The their misfortune in the air or malice, maybe magic, dark wicked magic. 
Somebody is thinking of you, Etsy, and they want to harm you. Uh, I inhale sharply. I had much the same feeling, but I tried to push it aside. I thought I was being paranoid. Oh, if only that was the case. Having room back up my doubts doesn't make me feel uh, vindicated. If anything, I feel much more concerned than I did before. How long have you had this feeling exactly? A while. Ever since we lay down in bed, it bothering me. My skin is crawling. I can't sleep. I worry about you. I guess that explains why she's so adamant about hugging me. Rune really is sweet. She's like a protective guard dog. I value her company a good deal, but her cryptic warnings aren't doing much to console me. I'm afraid of the lingering threat, whatever it might be. I don't want to accept upset Rune. If I'm going to be a real knight, I have to be strong. I can't let other people worry about me. I'll be fine, Rune. You sure, Etsy? You shaking? That's, um, just because of the cold. It cold? Rune frowns. I feel quite warm. Are you sure you're not sick? Maybe you really have been enchanted. Uh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I laugh awkwardly a little too loudly. The sound fills the dark, otherwise silent room, and I wince to hear it. I'm a terrible actress. My breezy laughter sounds so fake. It's all right, Rune. You don't need to worry about me. You sure? I'm sure. I don't think anyone will attack us while we're staying at this inn. And even if they did, I have my mother's sword. I'll be able to fight them off. And if that doesn't work, you can protect me. I trust you, Rune. Yes, you can trust. I do my best. No let anybody hurt you. Then it should be fine. I smile at Rune fondly and pat her head. I rub the base of her fluffy ears until she sighs. Her body, which hitherto was taut with anxiety, relaxes as a result of my minist ministrations. Rune's eyes squeeze shut. She yawns. Her mouth opens so wide I can see her molars. Etsy. She nuzzles against me, her head resting on my chest. Getting tired. Me too. This no good though. Want to stay up. Need to protect you. Can't let you get hurt. But you feel so nice and warm. It's fine. You can still go to sleep, Rune. I'll go to sleep too. When we wake up tomorrow, we'll see that everything's fine and we don't need to worry. No need? I hope not. I love you, Etsy. No matter what happens, I love you. N I never leave you. I love you too, Rune. I press a kiss against Rune's forehead. It feels hot like the rest of her, though I don't think she's come down with a fever. Rune is a very reliable friend. I don't really wor uh, I don't need to worry when I'm with her. I'm sure sh I'll be fine. I'm sure of it. And she never wakes up again. The last thing I think before I finally succumb to the world of sleep. What? I blink. I feel groggy and lightheaded, and there's a, po a dull pain in my temple. It takes a little while to adjust to my surroundings, but when I finally do, I find myself gasping. Yep, that's what I thought. All right, masochist queen lady. All right, let's go. I'm not in the inn anymore. In fact, I don't know where I am. I seem to be in some sort of cave. The walls are rough and made of stone, and I hear the faint sound of dripping water in the distance. The coal, it's cold. Incredibly dark. I have to strain my eyes to see more than a foot in front of my face. It hurts too, and I'm not just referring to the throbbing ache in my head. What's going on? I glance down at myself and... You're a tomb completely de- oh, okay. Alright, so I think that's a pretty good place to leave off after about 20 minutes. So thank you guys so much. It seems like the main character, Etsy, has been captured. I, I'm not gonna lie, when she said... Uh, when she was, like, surprised when she looks down, I was like, She completely turned into a different person. No, that would be, be bonkers, but... I guess this is a pretty good place to leave off. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you guys did like it, make sure you guys hit the like button because I really do appreciate it. And let me know in the comment section who your guys' favorite character is to this point in the Sakura Knight franchise. I hope you guys did enjoy and we'll see you all in the next episode.